Welcome to NPR Recital Hall, a series prepared by National Public Radio featuring soloists and solo ensembles from around the world recorded in concert. I'm Karin Hushagen, inviting you to join me now for a concert by Belgian violinist Arthur Grumio and English pianist Paul Crossley. Recorded at the Ascona Festival in Switzerland, the program features early works by Schubert, Mozart, and Fauré. On the first half of the program, Mr. Grumio and Mr. Crossley will perform two pieces by Franz Schubert, the Sonatina in G Minor, Opus 137, Number 3, and the Sonata in A Major, Opus 162. The second half will feature the Sonata in E Minor, Kirchhoff 304 by Mozart, and the Sonata in A Major, Opus 13 by Gabriel Fauré. One year after Schubert's death, the publisher Diabelli purchased a legacy of Schubert's manuscripts from the composer's brother Ferdinand. For the equivalent of $500, Diabelli received most of Schubert's leader, much of his keyboard music, and some of his greatest chamber works, including the two we will hear. The Sonatina for Violin and Piano in G Minor, Opus 137, Number 3, was composed in 1816 when Schubert was only 19. 1816 was an important year for the young Franz, for it was that year that marked the beginning of his haphazard career as a professional composer. The young man left the comparative security and chaos of his job as an assistant teacher in his father's grammar school to devote his full energies to composing. Two of his friends, Josef von Spaum and Franz von Schaubert, who were founding members of the party-going circle of friends known as the Schubertians, provided free room and board to Schubert, while others lent him money to live on. From then on, writes Fred Brunfeld, except for a brief interlude as music master to a patrician household, Schubert subsisted chiefly on his friend's generosity, leading the bohemian life with such a vengeance that he died of its side effects at the age of 31, in 1828. Schubert's first year as a full-time composer was a prolific one. He composed his fourth symphony, The Tragic, the lyrical fifth symphony in B-flat, and over 100 songs, including The Wanderer, The Harper and Mignon songs, and the well-known Cradle Song. The Sonatina in G minor, Opus 137, number 3, is a simple work in which Schubert, the leader composer, is very much apparent. The affecting melodies are superbly but simply stated and elaborated. Originally entitled Sonata by Schubert, Diabelli published it as a sonatina in 1836. It has four movements, Allegro Giusto, Andante, Minuetto, and Allegro Moderato. And here are violinist Arthur Grumio and pianist Paul Crossley to perform the Sonatina in G minor, Opus 137, number 3, by Franz Schubert. Thank you. 
The Sonatina in G minor, Opus 137, Number 3, by Franz Schubert. It was performed by violinist Arthur Grumio and pianist Paul Crossley. Back for another bow here at the Ascona Festival are Arthur Grumio and Paul Crossley. Born in Belgium in 1921, Arthur Grumio was a child prodigy. He made his public debut as a performer at the age of five. As a boy, he studied both violin and piano and won first prize for both instruments at the Charlois Conservatory, where he was a pupil. At the age of 11, he began to study with the great Belgian violinist Alfred Dubois, whom he was eventually to succeed as professor of violin at the Brussels Conservatory in 1949. As a young musician in Paris, he studied composition with George Enesco. After World War II, Grumio made many tours throughout Europe and Great Britain. In 1952, he made his debut in the United States with the Chicago Symphony and created quite a sensation. In fact, conductor Raphael Kubelik was forced to break his very firm rule against encores because of the ovation that Grumio received. And although demand for Grumio has continued to be very high in the U.S., he has not performed in this country for over 10 years. He is joined in this performance, given at the Ascona Festival in Switzerland, by pianist Paul Crossley, who was born in Yorkshire, England. After studying with Yvonne Lono and Olivier Messiaen in Paris, Crossley won a prize at the Olivier Messiaen Concours at the Royan Festival in 1968. He gave the world premiere of Sir Michael Tippett's Piano Sonata No. 3 at the Bath Festival in 1973. The next work on this concert, given by Arthur Grumio and Paul Crossley, will be the Sonata for Violin and Piano, Opus 162 by Franz Schubert. In the summer of 1816, Schubert heard a performance of Mozart's G minor quintet and found that no time, no circumstances could efface the impression that it made on him. He wrote that Mozart's music shows us in the darkness of his life a bright, clear, lovely distance for which we hope with confidence. O oh, Mozart, immortal Mozart, how many, oh, how endlessly many such comforting perceptions of a brighter and better life hast thou brought to our souls. Well, soon after that revelation, the 20-year-old Schubert wrote the sonata for violin and piano in A major, Opus 162. It is very Mozartian in character, with arresting and dramatic melodies. Its four movements are Allegro Moderato, Scherzo Presto, Andantino, and Allegro Vivace. And here are Arthur Grumio and Paul Crossley to perform the sonata for violin and piano Opus 162 by Franz Schubert.
Franz Schubert's Sonata in A Major for Violin and Piano, Opus 162. It was performed by violinist Arthur Grumio and pianist Paul Crossley. And another bow for Arthur Grumio and Paul Crossley. It's time now to pause for station identification. You're listening to NPR Recital Hall, a production of NPR, National Public Radio. I'm Karin Hushagen, and on the second half of this edition of NPR Recital Hall, violinist Arthur Grumio and pianist Paul Crossley will perform the Sonata in E Minor, Kirchhoff 304, by Mozart, and the Sonata in A Major, Opus 13, by Gabriel Fauré. Mozart was a child prodigy and a virtuoso performer on both the violin and the piano. As a boy, he traveled throughout Europe with his father and his older sister, playing at the great courts. In 1777, when Wolfgang was 21 years old, he and his mother traveled to Munich, where he was shown six duets for clavicembalo and violin by Josef Schuster, Kapellmeister at the court of Dresden. Mozart wrote to his father, I send my sister herewith six duets for clavicembalo and violin by Schuster, which I have often played here. They are not bad. If I stay on, I shall write six myself in the same style, as they are very popular here. My main object in sending them to you is that you may amuse yourselves a deux. Adio. And a year later in Mannheim and Paris, Mozart did compose a set of sonatas. They are the first sonatas that Mozart wrote in which both instruments are of equal importance. Alfred Einstein writes, the violin is no longer condemned to occasional interjections of incidental imitations. It now alternates with the piano and often quite openly and emphatically doubles the melody an octave higher. The E minor sonata has only two movements following the form established by Johann Christian Bach. They are Allegro and Tempo di Minuetto. And coming on stage here at the Ascona Festival in Switzerland are Arthur Grumio and Paul Crossley to perform the Sonata in E minor, Kirchhoff 304 by Mozart. Thank you. 
the Sonata in E minor, circle 304, by Mozart. It was performed by violinist Arthur Grumio and pianist Paul Crossley. Back for another bow here at the Ascona Festival are Arthur Grumio and Paul Crossley. The final work on this edition of NPR Recital Hall will be an early work by Gabriel Fauré, his Sonata for Violin and Piano in A Major, Opus 13. Often called the earliest chamber work of first-rate quality to have been written in France in the 19th century, it was composed in 1876 when Fauré was 30 years old. In classic sonata form, the sonata in A major maintains an almost even rhythmic flow in each movement. Fauré did this by keeping a fairly constant figuration in the piano part and building each movement around a specific pattern so that a large proportion of any movement is built out of the same rhythmic, though not necessarily the same melodic, phrase. Fauré also overlaps repetitive phrases throughout this work, that is, a phrase played by one instrument is repeated by the other before the first statement is ended. The four movements are Allegro Molto, Andante, Allegro Vivo, and Allegro Quasi Presto. The first movement starts with a lengthy piano solo, after which the violin enters and keeps its partner company in a lively fashion until the final decisive cadence. The interplay between the two instruments is characterized by overlapping repetition. The long, drawn, harmonic suspensions of the andante create an expectant mood. The Allegro Vivo is announced by the piano playing a perky theme which contains a heavy stroke on the upbeat. The violin promptly repeats it upside down, and the two instruments throw it around between them until they rest on an indecisive C-sharp. Here, Fauré does what he was never to do again in his chamber works. He writes a slower middle section, which contrasts sharply with the opening material. At the end of this slow, contemplative section, the piano plays the initial theme at half speed in a staccato bass. This is again taken up by a pizzicato on the violin, which then leads to a repetition of the opening scherzo, finishing this time on the tonic key. The final movement, Allegro Quasi Presto, is in 6-8. A strong skipping rhythm alternates with a bubbling scale passage characterized by melodic jumps. And here are violinist Arthur Grumio and pianist Paul Crossley to perform the Sonata in A Major for Violin and Piano, Opus 13 by Gabriel Fauré.